So keep that in mind. Keep all that stuff in mind. Now also realize that libraries are always a part of a larger community. They always are. I, 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 I think I know of one library, I think it's the Huntington Library in Chicago, that doesn't report to anybody else. All other libraries report to somebody else. If you are a school library, you report to the whole school. If you're a public library, you have a duty to your municipality. If you're a government library, you report to the government. Yeah, very good. Uh, <coughs> If you're an academic library, you report to the university or college. That is always the case. Here is another opportunity for libraries. Here's another way for us to differentiate ourselves from generic sorts of search engines. It is our responsibility, I think it's a, an implicit assumption, that we are supposed to know who our users are, know their information needs we can try to figure out ways to enhance this catalog thing and make sure that the results that are brought back are brought back into the context of that particular person. Let's see here, do I elaborate on this or not? No. Um, say for example, let's say here now, say for example, um, someone is doing searches about nuclear physics. And let's also suppose that you know that the person doing the searching is a nuclear physicist. Well, you are going to want to point them and direct them probably in one particular direction because they have a certain level of expertise. But if someone puts in the same search and you know that they are in primary school, you're probably not going to give them the same sort of content that you gave the nuclear physicist. Put your context Put, you, put the searches, put the person in context. Let's suppose that you work in an academic institution. And let's suppose that the person doing the search, you know that the person doing the searching is in an anthropology class. Well, you could then sort of filter your results accordingly. Yeah, I don't say that you would hide other stuff so much, but you might want to highlight certain things because of the particular user. Or let's suppose that the person has done numerous searches on the same sort of topic or field. Well, after a while, you're not going to want to bring back the same results every single time, but you're going to want to sort of supplement the process. It's kind of like a reference interview sort of thing. A person comes to you, you build a relationship with the person, and after a while, you don't always send them off to Reader's Guide because, oh, you've been there before. I'm going to go show you something else this time. We could figure out a way to put the person's context, uh, at, bring back searches in the context of the user. And Google's not going to be able to do that because they don't, well, do we want Google to know us uh, on that level? In our institutions, we are, we have library cards, we know who's in what classes, we know what majors they are, we might know what department or branch of government they're in, and we should be able to instill a little bit of the reference interview. I didn't say replace. Supplement the librarian interface with, with computer sorts of interfaces to do these so same sorts of things. Let's figure out ways to, uh, to, to do this as well. Now, technologically speaking, another thing about library catalogs that we have to th keep in mind is, is the differences between a database and an index. I was reading some review articles a few months ago, and it was um, quite an extensive set of articles describing uh, relevancy ranking and the history of relevancy ranking. And what it finally struck home to me, one sentence in these three or four articles. And the difference was that the, the, the author was comparing and contrasting librarians to information retrieval types, okay? And you know, I figured that's all the same, it's all very similar. But in one sentence, the man compared the difference. The li us librarian types like to organize things. We we'll bring them together and we like to make them into little we're piles. Whereas the information retrieval types were more akin to doing find. 
That is manifested in databases versus indexes. And we as a profession need to get our brain around both. Databases are great for organizing information, organizing and maintaining content. If you design your database correctly, I might have an item over here that's called Adventures of Huckleberry Finn, Adventures of Tom Sawyer, Tom Goes Abroad, my clock or my watch rather. And if you design it correctly, you'd know that all those things are by the same person. And I'd have another record over here, and it might say something like Samuel Clemens. No, that's not correct. The authoritative term is uh, Mark Twain. Great. If I have a database and I've designed it correctly, I can then change Mark Twain, Samuel Clemens to Mark Twain over here, and that will ripple through all these things. I don't have to do some sort of global find and replace sort of deal. Okay? That's the power of a relational databases. Wonderful. The problem with relational databases is that you have to know the structure of the database to do any sort of searching. You have to say things like title equals or personal name equals or corporate name equals or genre equals, or subject equals, or this kind of note equals, or that kind of note equals. It, it's not easy. You have to know the structure of the database to make it happen. OK, I hear you saying, but no, no, I can put in keywords. Yeah, well, behind the scenes, it's really doing something like title equals, or author equals, or note equals, or subject equals, and globbing it all together and bringing back your results. You really have to know the structure of your database behind the scenes. It's hard to search with databases. On the other hand, indexes make it really easy to search. Because an index, and I don't mean to insult your intelligence, but uh, do you have a book? Somebody have a book? <laughs> a book with an index. No, no book with an index. That's OK. You've all seen a back of a book index. It's no big deal. It's a list of words, and next to each word is a pointer. That's all an index is. Okay, and these computerized indexes, that's all they do. They just extract all the words, and beside each word, they say, they put a little pointer that says where the particular document can be found. In the back of a book index, it points to a page number. All right, great, Ooh, we're on a roll. <laughs> if I have a printed catalog cards, a printed catalog, the pointer is a a call number, correct. If I have, uh, if I go to Google, the pointer is a, all right, okay, so it's no big deal. You all pass with flying colors. <laughs> but that's what an index is. And you don't have to know a lot. You don't have to say subject equals. You just look up the word, okay? And not only that, but indexes allow you to do all sorts of countings. And you can do statistical analysis. So this word appears a lot or, or not, so this one is probably going to be more relevant than the next one, or more people use this one. Uh, that's another way. That's an advantage of indexes. The problem with indexes is I can't do this global find and replace sort of deal. Okay? I can't have all these things here, and I can't change it in one spot over here and have it ripple through all over there. Databases and indexes are two sides of the same information retrieval coin. And we've been focusing a whole lot in our profession on databases. And we've been going around for the past however many years saying, ah, oh, that keyword index stuff will never work. Well, hello, how many times have you searched Google in the past couple of days? Okay, it really does work. So we have to learn in our profession how to take advantage of both of these things. Okay. So then it comes to next generation library catalogs. 